Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, and pay attention to who is being called upon. O people, Ya ayyuhan nas, udhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum. Remember the blessing, the favor of your Lord upon you. Hal min khaliqin ghayrullahi yarzukukum min as sama'i wal ard? Is there anyone that is a creator in the heavens or in the earth that provides for you from all of these different directions? La ilaha illahu fa'anna tu'fakun. There is no God but Him. So how is it that you still manage to go astray? This is an interesting way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces Himself to people as a whole, reminding you as mankind of his ni'mah, of his blessing and everything that is encompassed within his blessings. And I want us to, inshallah ta'ala, for the next few minutes, dissect this idea of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you love Allah? Now, if you ask any Muslim child, do you love Allah? They're going to say yes, because they know that's what they're supposed to say. And most of us would say yes, because we know we're supposed to say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love God. But what does it actually mean to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is the reason by which Allah commands you to love Him? And I want to start with a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which also connects to this ayah that I just mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith from Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, qala ahibbu Allah, love Allah, lima yaghdukum min ni'amihi. Love Allah for what He provides you from with His blessings. Love Allah for the blessings that He descends upon you. Love Allah for His ni'mah upon you. And then He says, وَأَحِبُّونِي and love me بِحُبِّ اللَّهِ Because of the love of Allah. You want to love Allah? You love the most beloved of His creation to Him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so loving Allah is loving the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And why would you love the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so intensely? Except because of the love of Allah and the blessing that Allah provided to you through Him, which is the ultimate blessing of faith. So love Allah because of what He provides you of His blessings. And love me due to the love of Allah. And the Prophet says, وَأَحِبُّ أَهْلَ بَيْتِي لِحُبِّي And love my family for my love for them. We love the family of the Prophet ﷺ. His spouses, his children, all of them. We love Ahlul Bayt. We love the household of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Why do we love them so much? Because of the Prophet ﷺ's love for them. Why do we love Khadija radiallahu anha? Why do we love Fatima radiallahu anha? Why do we love the entire house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Because of how much the Prophet sallallahu alayhi loved him, loved them, and how much they loved him. So it is the love of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi that connects us to his family because of his love for them. And it is the love of Allah for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that connects us to him. But why love Allah himself, the love of God? And there's something very profound that the ulama point out in this regard. And there are long discourses in regards to the meanings and the ways in which you demonstrate that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are degrees of the love of Allah just like there are degrees with the love of anybody else. You love multiple people in your life, but you don't love them all the same. And in some ways, you can't quantify, right? how much you love a person and who you love more and these types of things, but you love multiple people, but there are different degrees and different manifestations of that love for the people that are around you and different reasons for how you love people. The constant of many of those reasons is because of some blessing or some goodness that has come to you through that person. And what the ulama mentioned is that the bare minimum of being introduced to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by His ni'mah, but it can't stop there. And this is what I want to talk about. The level of Bani Israel that the ulama mentioned, the level of Bani Israel, you always find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses them how? Ya Bani Israel, udhkuru ni'matallahi alaykum. O Bani Israel, remember the favor of Allah upon you. 
And some of the scholars, they say, but the standard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds this ummah to is, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu uthkurullah. Remember Allah. That a person graduates from not just remembering the obvious blessings of Allah upon you, because you only remind someone of those blessings when they are at risk of becoming ungrateful people and going off the path. And so you remind them with the obvious of what is around you. Look at the blessing of Allah upon you. And indeed, Allah reminds this ummah of the blessing upon us as well. إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ When you were enemies and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you out to be brothers, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Remember when a, a, a large army was going to consume you, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. But the majority of the Ayat, go to remember Allah. And the ulama here make this distinction. That there is loving Allah for his ni'mah, and then there is loving Allah li dhatihi, because of who he is, which is a higher level. I'm going to say that again. You love Allah for his ni'mah, and that is certainly there. And the more you recognize his ni'mah, the more you recognize his blessing, and you attribute it to him, the more you are increased in love of him, and that should directly translate into ibadah, into worship. You love Allah for his blessing, when you recognize his blessing, when you love him and recognize that blessing, then you increase in your worship of him. That is good. But loving Allah li dhatihi, because of who he is, is an even higher level, and that is the standard that this ummah should be seeking, that every person who is trying to develop a meaningful relationship with Allah should be seeking, is to love Allah for himself in a very powerful and meaningful way, and one that has practical consequences for you. And so the question becomes, what does it mean to love Allah for the sake of Allah? We always talk about what does it mean to love someone else, love your brother or your sister for the sake of Allah. What does it mean to love Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the ulama say that the two things are not disconnected. One of the great imams, Imam al-Marudi rahimahullah ta'ala, and uh, one of the, the gifts of uh, Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala is that you have these recorded conversations between him and his students Masail, some of the questions in fiqh, but then sometimes just these advices that become entire books, and this is the case with Imam Marudi rahimahullah ta'ala. Sometimes, in the course of asking Imam Ahmed rahimahullah multiple questions in fiqh or in hadith, he would ask him a life question. He'd ask him a question of taskiyah, a question of the heart. So he told him, he asked him the question, what is al-hubbu fillah? What does it really mean to love someone else for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, we talk about loving someone else for the sake of Allah, but what does that even mean? And he said that you don't love him for anything of this dunya. dunya. You don't love him because of this dunya. There's no worldly benefit. There is nothing attached to your love for that person that is causing you to love that person or that is dominating your love for that person. Your primary reason is that you love that person for Allah. And so it's no catch to it in regards to your love of that person. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that you build on that, and this is the concept where, it needs, to, where, where we, it needs to stick for a bit. If you love Allah only for the blessings of this dunya, and hence you increase in your worship of Allah and your love of Allah only when you feel like the blessings are coming down. You know, you always see a person when something great happens to them. Alhamdulillah, and indeed, sajda to shukur is from this deen. Sajda to shukur is from this deen. The prostration of gratitude is from this deen. But Ayyub alayhi salam was not just driven to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of shukur. When the good things were there, we praise him and celebrate him because he was driven to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same position when everything was taken away from him because his love of Allah was not about the ni'mah. It wasn't restricted to the ni'mah. And so if your relationship, your love of Allah is only attached to dunyawi things, when the ni'mah, when the blessings come descending upon you, what's going to happen? And this is where Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala injects why this is such an important conversation. Those that turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this dunya, right, when things start falling apart, ya'budullah ala harf, and they're ready to jump off of a cliff, those that turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this dunya, 
cannot be turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this dunya. You can't stop them there. It's like when you're raising your ch children and you hope that nothing bad will ever happen to them. I'm going to give them everything that they want and I'm just going to teach them to say Alhamdulillah. Good. Say Alhamdulillah. Love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The goodness that is coming to you is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you know inside of you, I hope nothing goes wrong because then the faith is going to fall apart. You can't restrict that relationship with Allah to ni'mah, to blessing. It has to move beyond that. It has to be so intense and so consistent that if a person were to see you when you're struggling or when you are celebrating, they would think you're in the same position. SubhanAllah. The example, if you saw the Prophet ﷺ praying Qiyamul Layl, you would be like, what is wrong? I hope he's okay. He's crying so much. So there's a puddle under him from his tears. Something must be wrong. No, something's not wrong. Something is right. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drives that person's ibadah, drives that person's closeness beyond ni'mah. And so the idea here is that those that turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and develop their relationship with Allah, don't just wait for the ni'mah to be good and alhamdulillah for that and intensely thank Allah then but they're constantly in the state of shukr, constantly in the state of love, constantly getting to know their Lord and increasing in their obedience to Him to where the other stuff is becoming irrelevant. And so someone might say, well, what does that even mean in terms of the correlation? How do I know that I'm increasing in my love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself? How do I know that I'm really developing that meaningful love and relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the correlation that Imam Ahmad rahimahullah says, connecting it to how you love someone for Allah, the more that a person grows in their love for Allah, the more their indifference towards this dunya grows. I'm going to say that again. The more that a person grows in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that their indifference towards the material world starts to grow as well, starts to parallel that. Now, does that mean that you don't love your family as much? No, you love people for Allah. But that means that your concern for money, your concern for reputation, your concern for fame, your concern for prosperity, your love of your houses, your love of your cars, your love of your clothes, your love of all of these things, it just naturally starts to diminish. Not because you hate that stuff, you become indifferent towards it. It becomes a thing that's enjoyment, but at the same time, your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is occupying more and more of your heart. And that's a reality that we can't get around from this deen. No, we're not people who renounce this world to where we have to inflict poverty on ourselves, but the attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly leads to detachment from those things. That's why the Prophet وسلم, when he was asked by Sahal ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, you know, how can I make Allah and the people love me? How do I make Allah and the people love me? قَالَ إِزْهَدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُحِبُّكُ اللَّهِ You know, detach yourself from the dunya, Allah will love you. And he said, by the way, the same thing is true for people. وَزْهَدْ فِي مَا عِنْدَ النَّاسِ يُحِبُّكَ النَّاسِ And renounce what people possess and people will love you too because they won't feel threatened by you. You don't have anything you're trying to get out of them all the time. They'll feel like your relationship with them is genuine. It goes beyond benefits and trying to extract something. You're not trying to compete with them. You're not trying to compete with them over this world. Like, no, we're good. I'm being nice to you because I'm being nice to you. <laughs> you know, I'm actually developing a relationship with you. I'm not hoping that one day you're going to remember and then do this for me. No, no. This is an actual relationship. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your appetite for dunya becomes less. Why is that so important for our faith? Because when is the crisis of faith induced? When I've been told my whole life, just say alhamdulillah, do this, and ni'mah's gonna grow, ni'mah's gonna grow, ni'mah's gonna grow, blessings, blessings, good, pray this, do this. But then when it's those prolonged periods of deprivation, I'm not talking about the, the strike, but like prolonged periods, illness, unemployment, deprivation for a long time, if your love of Allah was restricted to ni'mah, then you'll start to resent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for deprivation of ni'mah. See the problem? That's why Imam Ahmad rahimahullah is saying it's so important. If your love of Allah was attached solely to ni'mah, 
then you're going to resent Allah when the deprivation of ni'mah starts to prolong. A resentment will grow. Whereas if your love of Allah has grown beyond ni'mah, then it will be consistent and hold you through the good times and the bad times, through the times of prosperity and the times of adversity, through the times of blessing and the times of deprivation because you're longing for something greater. You've gotten to know his attributes. You've gotten to know his names. Your dua is intense all the time. You're putting that time aside for that prayer, for that ibadah all the time. You're not waiting for something catastrophic to happen, to have a deep attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the ulama say again, Kalla bal tuhibboon al ajila wa tadharoon al akhira. That a person loves this world too much, there's no space for loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you're going to try to turn deen, Allah, your relationship with Allah, merely into a tool of this dunya. How do you then move forward? At this point, this is where we take two lessons, inshallah ta'ala, and I'll end with this. Loving ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving Allah for his ni'mah is a station that then translates into the love of Allah. Uthkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum to uthkuru Allah. In the akhirah, loving thawab, which is a thing, we love Jannah, loving the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala translates into just loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to where you ever stop loving Jannah. That's where, that's where some of the stuff gets a little beyond the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the ulama actually condemned that level of stated mysticism. That I stop loving Jannah and caring about Jannah not because I love Allah that much. No, just like you love Allah for ni'mah, in this dunya, and it builds your love of Allah in the holistic sense. You love Allah for the thawab, for the guaranteed reward in the hereafter, and it builds your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is greater than Jannah. If Allah gives you Himself. Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does a man do when he loves people but his deeds don't line up with theirs? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anta ya, ya Abu Dhar, you, O oh Abu Dhar, ma'man ahbabt. You're with those who you love. Qala fa inni uhibbu Allah wa rasoola. He said, I love Allah and His Messenger. He said, Anta ya Abu Dhar, ma'man ahbabt. You are, O oh Abu Dhar, with the one that you love. You love Allah, you'll be with Allah. And if you're with Allah, everything else will work itself out in the hereafter. In this world, you love Allah, the ni'mah will work itself out. In the hereafter, you love Allah, the reward will work itself out. Because if you're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything that comes after that is good. You love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-firdaus al-a'la is yours because you've got to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then if you're true in your stated love. But Allah will test you with that claim. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, qala za'ama qawmun annahum yuhibboon Allah. You had these people that claimed they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's talking about the companions. فَبَتَلَاهُمْ بِهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ So Allah tested them with a verse. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Say, you really love Allah? Follow the Messenger وسلم, And he'll love you back. It's not an empty claim. That doesn't mean that you put a, a bumper sticker on your car, I love Allah. Or your, your cover photo on social media is I love Allah and that's it. You can just make a claim like that. None of it shows in your actions. You still indulge in the prohibitions. You disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no trajectory of growing religiosity to him whatsoever. But alhamdulillah, I love Allah. Good luck with that on the Day of Judgment. It's not going to get you very far. Because that has to translate into something. And everyone has to be making progress in that trajectory. And if that trajectory just parallels ni'mah, 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 blessing, 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 and then boom, something bad happens, and then your obedience of Allah, and then that's not really loving Allah for Allah, is it? فَقَالْ لِمَامَ الشَّعْفِ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى تَعْصِدْ إِلَاهَ وَأَنْتَ تُظْهِرُ حُبَّهُ هَذَا مَحَالٌ فِي الْقِيَاسِ بَدِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ You claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you disobey Him. That's a foul analogy. A foul analogy to make with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If your love of Allah was true, then you would follow Him. Because if you love someone, then you obey them. You follow what they ask you to do as well. So you can't just make these empty claims. And then the end of that is what? When you start to do what you're supposed to do and worship Allah properly, 
and you see the joy that comes to you through that worship, then what is the joy of the things of this world anymore? What is the joy of the things in this world anymore? When you're tasting the sweetness of that trajectory of good deeds and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and validation through a new way and prosperity through a new way and that meaningful relationship, naturally your appetite for the worldly stuff diminishes too. And that's how you know that that change is happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that are grateful and patient and love Him from the muhsineen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be with Him and with our beloved Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Jannah al-Firdaus. Allahumma ameenahu.